Hey, this is Shannon Graham, and I just had the privilege of being on the root of all success with the real Jason Duncan. And listen, I got to tell you, uh, I'm not on a ton of podcasts, but I'm on a good amount. And this has got to be one of my favorite interviews I've done in a while. Uh, We got into all kinds of things as far as my background and my stories of success in making the world a better place. But more importantly, Jason is such a fantastic coach. He's a great interviewer, and I just had a fantastic time on the show today. Welcome to the root of all success with the real Jason Duncan, a podcast that explores how the world's most powerful entrepreneurs unlocked success and how their stories can help you do the same. A successful educator turned entrepreneur, Jason has built multi-million dollar businesses that have been featured in Inc. Magazine and Entrepreneur Magazine. His life's mission now is helping entrepreneurs live what he calls hashtag the exit lifestyle. Introducing TEDx speaker, mastermind leader, author, entrepreneur, cigar aficionado, motorcycle enthusiast, and host of The Root of All Success, The Real Jason Duncan. The The Real Real Jason Jason Duncan. Duncan. Welcome back to another episode of the show. I am The Real Jason Duncan. Today, I have as a guest one of my coaches. I have Shannon Graham on the show today. He's one of the top coaches in the world for visionary leaders who want to change the world by doing the impossible. He's worked with leaders in New Zealand to help raise the GDP of their country. He's worked with tech entrepreneurs uh, that help countries. He's worked with financial empowerment for Hispanic immigrants. He's even worked on platforms that are focused on ending video game addiction. This guy has worked with a lot of people. And you're going to really love his story of how he first started really as a homeless guy and placing an ad in Craigslist to become a coach for somebody. It's a phenomenal story. You don't want to miss this. So tune in and please help me welcome Shannon Graham to the root of all success. Hey, Shannon, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Well, it's a, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. We only recently met over the last several months and uh, I, I, I want to tell everybody how we met. Cause I think, I think it's kind of a funny story. You know, you, yeah. you, uh, you're a coach, uh, you're, you're a coach who works with very high level um, entrepreneurs, executives, and you, you're helping them change the world. And then you also have a program where you help coaches, land six figure clients because that's who you work with you work with six people who pay you over six figures a year to to work with you to achieve great things and you posted this uh you had an ad on on instagram about talking about that and it was it, you know it wasn't a flashy ad or anything crazy it was just this is what i do if you're a coach you want to charge six figures for your services you know reach out let me know <laughs> and the hate the comments of hate in the in the in the second it was crazy. People were saying nobody pays a hundred grand for coach and nobody does this. This guy's a scammer. And I'm reading it thinking it's funny because like I have clients who pay me that. I said, well, I'd like to figure out more. And so I piped in and said, well, the, the guy's not scamming you. It's I don't know him, but it, this is this is like legit. It's possible. And then I decided to reach out to you and ended up ultimately hiring you to help me with that. So. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of funny stuff. Do you, is that the first time you've had that ad go out like that and have the hate come in? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've been in the game this year is going to be 20 years. So I've, I've received some hate in the past, but certainly that one is, is probably takes the cake. I think. What, what do you think is, why do you think people have this assumption that nobody pays a hundred grand or more for coaching? Why, why do these people on Instagram think that doesn't happen? Uh, you know, man, I, I think a lot of it is just mindset. I think it's mindset. If it's not real in their world, then it's not real, period. Hmm. And obviously that's not true, but they make it true in their mind. Yeah. I, well, I, I remember back, and I think I told you the story when I, I flew out and, and met with you, what, I guess it's been a couple months ago. But when uh, yeah. when I first got into the coaching, like into being a client of coaches 
and I paid a guy 25 grand to coach me for the year. And to me, that was a ton of money at the time to pay somebody. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, this is expensive. And then as I got in that yeah. guy's circle, I found that he was charging some people 25 and he had another program that was 40, another program that was 60. And he was trying to start yeah. a hundred K program. And at the time I was thinking, that's yeah. insane. Who would do that? And now yeah. <laughs> lots of people do that. And I have lots of people that's pay me right. that. And I know you do too. You've been doing this a lot longer than me. So um, why would yeah. somebody want to pay? Let's get right down to it. Why would somebody pay? invest, pay, spend, whatever you want to say, a hundred, 150 grand. I think you charge 150 grand. Like why would somebody pay that to work with a coach for a year? Uh, well, it's, it's a combination of, of two things in my experience. Number one, the cost of that person staying where they are is significantly more. The other side of that is the value of being where they want to be in their life, in their business, uh, the value of that is worth significantly more than the price tag. So this is what I call price juxtaposition, where you juxtapose three prices. You have the price of not doing anything, which is typically very high. The cost of being where you want to be very high, or the, or the value of being where you want to be very high, and then the actual price tag. And when you line it up that way, even though the price tag is high, it's actually the lowest number of the three. And so it's like anything else. It's all relative. Um, you know, the, the only reason anyone pays for anything is because the value of having it exceeds the value of not having it. Uh, it's, it's, just a, 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 it's just a different game. It's just a higher caliber, that's all. Yeah. Well, I think that's a really good way to look at it. And uh, I think for a lot of the listeners right now, um, you know, I've had, I've had clients who've hired me because they listen to my show and then, Hey, I really like what they're hearing and they reach out. Um, so, so for those who have not yet hired you or me and they're listening to the show thinking, Holy crap, dude, like you charge 150, right? I want to make sure I get this right. You're, you're pretty upfront with the pricing you that's put right. it on. And that's what you coached me to yeah. do, frankly, to put the pricing. Yeah. Mine's 125, yeah. yours is 150. Uh, we, we, of course, mm -hmm. We serve different kinds of people for different reasons, but nevertheless, we're both coaches yeah. that do that. So for the people that are, that are listening right now that say, I can't, I can't fathom why staying where I am costs more than 150 grand help, help somebody see that. Can, can we talk you and me talk through what that might look like to help them understand it? Yeah. Well, there, there's two sides to, well, there's three sides to that. The first is, um, to be honest, it, it, we live in a culture that uh, kind of is very good at numbing and distracting itself from its pain. So most people are walking around with more pain than what they're willing to admit. And that's because we kind of live in a society where everything is supposed to be okay. And we're not supposed to talk about our problems and, you know, that kind of thing. So very often we have pain that we don't talk about that we don't even admit to ourselves. And what that does is it, it creates kind of a numbing effect. Uh, but when we get honest, when we really sober up to the pain of being where we are, then we start to feel it. We start to really understand what it's costing us. And that's just what it's cost us up to where we are today. The second, the, the other side of that coin is, what is it going to continue to cost you? What is the price of staying where you are going to continue to be? Because it doesn't, it never gets better. Like if nothing changes, nothing changes. So the price only goes up over time. It only gets worse. Like if it, it's, it's like anything, if you have a business that's not working, to not do anything about it, it's only going to get worse. If you have a relationship that's not working, to not do anything about it, it's only going to get worse. So the price actually only goes up over time. The other side is that most people are happy kind of where they are, but that's a delusion. That's not actually true. Most people are not truly happy where they are. Most people want to be, to do, to have, or to give something different. And there's plenty of data that points to that. 80% of the global workforce is not happy with their job. Um, you know, 
there's all kinds of statistics we could look at that point to that. So again, it's about being honest and saying, what do you really want? And sometimes there's mindset traps that come up with that as far as like limiting beliefs of like, well, I don't, I don't believe it's possible to have that, or I don't believe I deserve to have that. Um, but to, to let go of those and to be really honest, all of a sudden we realize that being who we want to be, doing what we want to do, having what we want to have, giving what we want to give, the value of that is very high. And so if someone can help us do that and avoid paying the steep cost of being where we are and staying there and having what we really want to have, all of a sudden it, it starts to make a lot of sense. Is there a, is there a way, um, a practical way that as coaches, we can coach people through calculating the costs of where they are now. Is there, have you thought about, does that question make sense? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's really just a series of questions. And, and again, it's a two part question series, which is the first part is to understand somebody's pain, to help them understand their own pain. And it's a series of just simply asking questions about why things currently aren't working. And the goal of that line of questioning is to get people ultimately to take responsibility for where they are and to also, again, sober up to the reality of where they are. Because most people are, are in a, a house that's burning down and they're just so delusional that they stay in it. So the only reason that someone is going to leave is because they, they've actually woken up to what's happened or what's happening around them. So by asking the series of questions of, well, why is this happening? What's going on? How do you really feel about this? It, it allows them to be honest and it allows them to feel the totality of the reality that they're living in. That's part one. Part two is, what do you want? And to ask them that line of questioning until they really get to the bottom of what it is that they're really after. And that helps bring out and illuminate the real value that, that they're after. Hmm. So the delusion of happiness, you, you mentioned, you use that word delusion a few times. And I, I, um, I talk about that. I call that the hero syndrome personally is what I, what I've phrased it as like the hero syndrome is a syndrome that we have as business owners, as entrepreneurs that says we have to be the hero of the business because in fact, we're the only person that can save the day when the day needs to be saved. And that, that yeah. is a delusional thought because at the beginning, it's true. I, I was talking, this is funny. I was talking to a guy, a potential client of mine, and maybe he'll listen to the show at some point, but, but I was talking to him just uh, two days ago and we, he's, he's a very prolific uh, podcaster and he has a, he is one of the top podcasts in his niche in the world. And it is a really, really weird niche, but he has a top one and he has to do, he does two shows a day. He did, I think he said 530 shows last year, 530. Wow. Like, that's a, that's, that's crazy. Wow. And then he says, well, you know, I've had guests come uh, like guest hosts come in and host it from time to time and they suck. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and of course I, I'm like, I get it. Well, when was your first show? And he told me, and I said, well, have you looked at that lately? I'm like, how bad was that? He goes, yeah, it sucked. And so this idea is that yeah. he, I could suck early, but I can't let anybody else suck early. And so that's the hero yeah. syndrome kicking in. It's the delusion of yeah. that we are the only one that have to do it. Plus the delusion, as you said, the delusion of happiness is that we we convince ourselves that we're happy with the current situation. The house is burning down and we feel, oh, it's warm. It's nice. But in fact, it's going to kill you if you stick in it. Yeah, that's 100% true. So let's let's talk about how you got here. So you've been coaching now for almost 20 years. Um, you, you charge yep. uh, your one on ones is a is 150 grand a year. It's a three year commitment and you work with a lot of high level guys. You also have a program where you work with coaches like me who want to figure out the, you know, the best plan to get to more six figure clients. And, and I'm here to say as a testimonial for your sake that that you're you do really good work because I hired you. And since I made the decision to hire you, I pulled pulled in two or three more clients. I can't remember what it was, two or three more clients. And uh, I'm on the verge of adding a couple more. So it's this is a, it, it, you're good. You're good at what you do. But you told me over lunch one day the story of your very first client <laughs> in, in New York. 
having that. Is that a story yeah. you'd be willing to tell today? Because I thought that was a phenomenal story. Then I also want to tell the story of the um, in uh, of your New Zealand story because I thought that was also cool too. But tell tell that story yeah. of your very first ever coaching client and why you got into the coaching game twenty years ago. To begin yeah. With. Let's take a quick break to thank our amazing sponsors for making this podcast possible. Hey, I want to talk with you about one of my favorite tools as a salesperson and as an entrepreneur, and that tool is Dub. I want you to imagine for a minute getting an email from somebody, and instead of just being the plain old crappy text in an email, rather than just having a bunch of HTML where it's pictures and stuff, what if it was a video? And the video had a little GIF, and it was playing right there in the email as soon as you opened it, and it had your name. Like it said, hello, Jason, check this out. And then you clicked play and it played right there in your inbox in the window. And it was somebody trying to tell you how great you are, or how awesome they can help you, how good they can help you out. That is the power of video emails. I want you to try Dub out. I've been using it for years. I have closed countless millions of dollars of, in sales over the last six years or so using Dub, and you can do it too. All you got to do is go to therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. That's D-U-B-B, therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. Dub will help you make an impact in your sales through video. It's going to help you with, they've even got a CRM built into it. You can build landing pages. You can do campaigns, even SMS campaigns. You can set up automations to manage workflows and maximize conversions. And like I said, they've got an existing software platform inside Dub to take your CRM to the next level. Try this out. Get a free special just by being a listener to the podcast. Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash dub. Get two weeks to try it for free and 50% off your first two months. That's therealjasonduncan.com slash dub. 40 years ago, you weren't in business unless you had your business in the yellow pages. You remember those things? <laughs> And 30 years ago, you weren't in business unless you had a door-to-door -door salesman. 20 years ago, you weren't in business unless you had a website. And today, you're not in business unless you're doing social media content. Am I right? Social media content. Social media content in the form of like micro content, which is 30 to 60 second spots on Instagram Reels or TikTok or YouTube Shorts. That's the way business is done. As a matter of fact, that may be how you found out about this podcast or me as a business coach. This medium that we're using today to communicate what we do is vitally important. And just recording yourself isn't enough. You've got to do it right. And my friends over at Story do it right. And one of the problems with doing it wrong is that you sit around thinking, well, what the heck am I going to record? How, what am I going to say? How am I going to say it? Like, I don't know what to talk about. Well, Story takes all of that away from you. Stop wasting time trying to come up with content because Story will send you a video prompt on what to record. You can pick the categories you want to record in, whether it's real estate, entrepreneurship, finance, relationship, leadership, life insurance. It could be anything. Don't waste time on that. And by the way, if you're not confident in talking on video or if the video editing portion takes up way too much of your time, Story will edit the videos to perform well on social media. They add the subtitles, the pop-ups, the zoom cuts. They remove all the filler words like uh and um and uh. They remove the awkward pauses. And then they take that video and post it for you. They write the captions, they add the relevant hashtags, and they post it on the platforms that you care about the most. It's exactly what you need to be in business today and to be successful at it. So if you want to learn how to do social media the way the influencers do, you need to go to therealjasonduncan.com slash story. And that story with two Y's. Why? Because they're awesome. Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash story. That's S-T-O-R-Y-Y for 10% off your first three months to try story out. You're going to thank me later. Thanks for listening to our sponsors. Now, back to the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so uh, I'm originally from Vermont. And uh, when I graduated high school, I kind of wanted to get out of town. You know, the town I grew up in was really small. And uh, so I moved to New York City. And 
um, I, you know, I had a, I had a good experience there overall, but at one point, uh, I was in between jobs. I was in between apartments. I, I just, I didn't have any money and, uh, I was actually homeless for about a week and a half, which, you know, when you're young, you you can kind of do it. And it's a little bit of an adventure, but man, I'll tell you after a couple of days, it, it gets old pretty fast. Uh, and so I, I was like, I got to do something. I got to, I got to make some money. Um, but you know, getting a job that takes time. You got to apply, you got to, you know, get the job. Once you get the job, you don't get paid right away. Many jobs pay bi weekly. So I wasn't even going to get a paycheck for at least two or three weeks and I needed money like today. And so I was like, okay, I got to figure something out. My grandfather was an entrepreneur. My dad was an entrepreneur. So entrepreneurship kind of runs in in my blood. So I said, okay, forget the job. I'm going to do something on my own. And I'm, I'm kind of racking my brain about like, you know, some type of side hustle I could do because I have a pretty unique background. I've done a lot of different things in my day. So I have different types of value that, you know, I can bring to the table. And so I'm, I'm sifting through all these different things I could potentially do. And I finally just said, what's the thing that I want to do? And as simple as that question is, man, you'd be surprised at how few people are willing to entertain that question. And so I said, man, I, I just really like helping people. Um, I had a lot of really big breakthroughs with personal development. And I said, man, if I could just help other people have similar breakthroughs like that, I would be really happy. And um, Tony Robbins was a big inspiration for me. And, you know, I was like, well, I mean, Tony's done pretty well financially. So maybe I could make a living just helping people have a better life. And so I went to Craigslist and I put an ad on Craigslist. Uh, and I didn't even, I didn't even call it a life coach or any that, that term like barely even existed back then. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that I called it a life helper. I, I shit you not. And <laughs> I, I would have loved to seen the, the copy that I wrote for that, that Craigslist ad. Cause I'm pretty sure it was like one big run on sentence. And it was basically just like, Hey, you know, if you're, if you're not happy, I'll, I'll, I'll help you have a better life. And I got a phone call and especially if you'd live in New York city, you know, if your phone rings and it's a number that you don't recognize, you don't answer it. And so my phone rings and I'm like, Oh man, you know, who is this? And on the last ring, my brain goes, dude, you put the Craigslist ad out. You put your number in the ad. It's somebody calling you from the thing. So on the very last ring, I answer the phone. And sure enough, it's this guy that wants to meet uh, to learn about coaching. And so, um, you know, I, I luckily I had some friends in the, in the fashion industry. And so I was able to like piece together an outfit to kind of, <laughs> as, as Frank Kern would say, uh, the, 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 uh, the illusion of legitimacy. Uh, so I, I showed up, you know, looking sharp. Uh, but I mean, dude, I was 21. I was 21. And you're still living in your, you're, you're I, living in your car at this point, right? I, I didn't even, dude, I didn't even have a car. I was living in an abandoned, like rundown building oh, <laughs> on man. a, I was, I was sleeping on a five gallon bucket. Um, so yeah, I mean, dude, I, I literally was at the bottom and I showed up, I was 21 at that, at, dude, at age 21, I looked like I was probably 17 and this guy shows up, he walks through the door. He, he's like typical Brooklyn, kind of like very hardened New York guy. And he looks me up and down and he's like, yeah, right. This is a scam. And he turns around and he starts to walk out the door. And I was like, I was desperate, man. Like I, what I, I had to make this work. And so I was like, Hey man, you came here. You agreed to, to meet with me for an hour, sit down for 30 minutes. I'll buy you a coffee. I literally think I had like $4 left to my name. And I'm like praying to God that he didn't get the grande coffee. Cause I didn't you know, even know if I had enough money to pay for it. I said, you agreed to come here for an hour, sit down for 30 minutes. That's it. I'll buy you a coffee. 
if you don't like what I have to say, the worst that came out of it is I bought you a coffee. Does that sound fair? And he sits down and he crosses his arms and he's got this smug look on his face and he's like, okay, let's see what you got. And I was like, oh my God. And so I, I remember thinking to myself, don't try to sell this guy anything. Uh, you know, just, just truly help him. Just help him. Don't, don't sell him anything. Just see how you can help this guy. And during that 30 minutes, I watched his physiology change. And he softened up and he opened up. And then he got to the point where he's leaning forward on the table, like listening to every word that I was saying. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is he, he ended up becoming the first client. And I'll never forget, we get to the end of the conversation and he said, okay, man, I think this is going to be really good. How much? Now, you have to realize that I had only literally just come up with this idea like the night before, sitting in an alleyway, looking across at a brick wall that was like some version of a whiteboard where I'm trying to come up with ideas on like how to get myself out of this situation. I'm like, oh, yeah, helping people. I think that'd be really cool. Nowhere in my twilight mania did I ever think about how much I was going to charge for this thing. So I was totally at, uh, like I had no clue. Like, what, what do you even charge for something like that? So I had no idea. And I remember thinking to myself, like, oh, man, if I start to, like, fumble and stall now, like, it's going to look really bad. I got I to gotta make it seem like I've got this all figured out. And I'm, like, going back and forth with the numbers because, like, the abundance was, like, go for, go for what you really want. And then the scarcity was like, dude, you need money. Just, uh, just say whatever number you feel like is going to work. And I was like, ah, and in a fraction of a second, I'll never forget. I heard Tony Robbins voice in my head say, it doesn't matter what you say, just say anything, but say it with conviction. And I looked him straight in the face and I said a hundred, but I didn't qualify it. So what does that mean? Like a hundred an hour, a hundred a month. Like I was totally at his mercy at that point, because I, I just, that's all I had the courage to say. And he looks up in his head like this, like he's calculating and he goes, well, it's a, it's more than I thought, but you know what? I think it's going to be worth it. And he pulls me outside to the ATM and he pulls out $400 because we agreed to start with one month. We were going to start with one month and then kind of go from there. He pulls out 400 bucks and crams it into my hand. And he says, okay, coach, I'll see you next week. And walks across the street and I'm standing there with 400 bucks in my hand. And I was like, I was blown away. That was one of the most transformational revolutionary moments of my entire life because everything from like value creation to, uh, to, to getting paid to do something that, uh, that frankly, I, to this day I would do for free. Uh, I mean, just, it all changed in, in, in instant. And, uh, that, that was wow. my first client. Did you, did, did you ever, do you keep up with this guy? I mean, at some point did he realize, no, holy I, crap, I hired a homeless dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, no, I haven't heard from him since. Wow. All right. Now let's tell, let's tell a more recent story. So you talked about, you told yeah. me the story, uh, and, and I mentioned this in the, in the top, at the top of the show with the intro about you helping raise the GDP of it is New Zealand, I think, um, by raising the confidence of the tech entrepreneurs. I thought that was a really interesting and curious story. And I want to set this up to help you tell the story. So when you told me the story, you were, you, you couched that around the context of why you do what you do as a three-year commitment, 150 grand a year, you're working on people to do a moonshot, like something big, something crazy that they probably don't even have anybody in their circles that would agree that this is even a con concept that will work. And you're the guy that kind of comes in and says, look, I got you. I can help walk you through this. Of course, you've never done that one thing before, but you were able to do it with this guy from New Zealand. So tell that story. Yeah. So, you know, I got to a point in my coaching career where I wanted to really play a much bigger game. And I, I have a deep desire to see the world move towards more of its collective potential. So individually, I want to see people thriving and collectively, I want to see us as, as a civilization thrive. So I decided to take on moonshot level projects, projects that were so big that 
the answers on, on how to achieve them didn't even exist. And I was really inspired by that idea because it forces me to a, a higher level of service delivery. Um, and it allows me to play in a space that really makes a big impact in the world. And so um, the, the very first client that came on board with that program was a guy from New Zealand. And his big moonshot was that he wanted to raise the GDP of New Zealand by raising the GDC, which is gross domestic confidence. Uh, because in New Zealand, per capita, they have some of the most innovative geniuses in the world. The challenge is they have this thing, this cultural mindset called tall poppy syndrome, which is essentially like a false humility in a way. They, they don't believe in themselves ultimately. And so it's ironic because they're extremely intelligent. They, they create world-changing technology, but then they don't believe in themselves and they sit on it. And so the idea was if we could empower them and get them to believe in themselves, and take this pre-existing world-changing technology and simply have the confidence to bring it to the world stage, the GDP would go up simply as a side effect. And so that was the idea. We had no idea how to do it. And so we had to kind of really go to a level of creativity and imagination to figure it out. And the answer that we came to was, was the four-minute mile. Essentially, Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile no one had ever done it before that. Everyone thought it was impossible. He did it. And the year that he did it, 22 other people did it simply because they believed something new was possible. And so that's pretty profound if you really think about it, because what that means is uh, one person can do one thing one time and upgrade the collective consciousness potentiality. So we took a page from that playbook and rather than trying to raise the collective consciousness of the geniuses and the engineers and the mavericks and scientists in New Zealand, we found just one and we decided to work with just one to be the first domino. And he invented what's called a, a rapid public transportation system. And uh, he actually ended up getting invited to India to pitch his idea uh, to the board of transportation and because he had confidence and because he had a voice, they said yes. And that deal was worth 20% of the bilateral trade between New Zealand and India that year that nothing like that had ever happened before. And New Zealand's a relatively small pond. And so word got out really quickly and all the other inventors and, and engineers found out about this and it was like the four minute mile. They, they were all kind of inspired and said, wow, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. And this year, uh, technology is going to contribute just under livestock as far as GDP, uh, which, which is the highest it's ever been in, in New Zealand's history. So technology has contributed to GDP higher than ever before. Um, now, we can't necessarily take all of the credit for that, but certainly this project has made a big dent in that. Um, so that's, that's easily one of my favorite stories uh, as far as the work that I, that I do. Well, it's a, it's a great story, and it's a good success story about the power of coaching. Because I think one of the themes of this show is, you know, why would you invest in a coach? Why would you invest in a coach to the degree of six figures? And you, we illustrated that early on. It's the cost of staying the same outweighs the cost of the change. And I think Tony Robbins says you only change when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of the change. So it's all the same concept. It's a mindset issue. And so you are you were able to help create a significant amount of success for an entire country only because this one guy was willing to say, you know what? I don't like where we are. I will invest the time, energy, and money into your help. Shannon Graham, help me figure this out. And because he did, he, I mean, far exceeded the investment that he made in you. I mean, yeah. by lots, and lots. I mean, what, what do oh, you, yeah. do you see a typical ROI that happens for clients that, that, that's related to money and or time or under impact? Um, it's high. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I, I couldn't tell you what the average number is, but it, it's, it's, it's quite high. It's, it's usually far above 10 X. Yeah. Well, that's, that's significant. I, I, I tell people that my clients typically see a three to five X return year one. And yeah. uh, that's been pretty consistent. And now, now obviously yeah. everybody's different and everybody's situation is different. And some people, frankly, aren't interested in the more money side of it. They're looking for the more quality of life and that's hard to quantify. Yeah. But in reality, yeah. what I'm seeing, the guys who invest uh, that are investing a hundred, hundred twenty five thousand dollars a year to work with me as a coach. What they're seeing is they're they're seeing, oh, I'm able to find within the first six months efficiencies that they just simply couldn't see because they're too close. And I just yeah. show them these efficiencies, and there's another two hundred grand at the bottom line, or there's another three hundred grand at the bottom line of five hundred grand, and that's just within the first year. And then it continues yeah. to grow over time. So if a coach isn't returning, I think a minimum of three to five times what you're paying to do it, you probably need to reconsider. It doesn't mean they're the wrong coach, but you need to reconsider the engagement. Yeah. And it also, it also is important to get clear about the ROI that you're looking for. Um, because again, to your point for, for some people, the ROI may be invisible, meaning it's, it's not monetary. Um, it, it could be something like confidence. It could be something uh, like clarity uh, so, so to anyone who's, who's in kind of a season of hiring a coach, uh, the only way that you'll know if it, it, it was a good experience or a great experience, uh, or something more or less than that is simply by you clarifying what, what is, what's an ROI to you? What does a home run look like to you? Um, that's really the best way to measure and I think that's a great perspective. And again, I think that for those that are listening that are looking at either, maybe there's our coaches listening to this now that want to know how to play to hire game, but then there's people that are trying to figure out how do I analyze and hire a coach? I think that's a great question that you just posed there, Shannon, is what are we trying to do here? And what is the home run? What does success look like? Because if you invest, if I invested $150,000 into coaching with someone, there's got to be a concrete, in my opinion, a concrete thing that this is what I want to happen as a result yeah. of this money. In the same way that if I took that 150 and invested in a new real estate project or invested in a new business project, there's a certain return that could be related yeah. to money, could be related to tax advantages. It could be related to access sure. where, hey, if I do this, I now get access to something I didn't have access to before. So I think yep. everybody needs to take a look at that. And coaches should do be, you know, pay attention to ask ask that of their potential client on the front end, which, uh, which is a yeah, great question. A, a good, it's, it's really a team effort. You know, a, a good client will be clear about what it is they're looking to get. And a good coach will help push them to, to possibly even go a little further to find new levels of clarity of, of that ROI to really sharpen up what that looks like for them. But more importantly, why they want it, because, to embark on a coaching relationship with someone, uh, especially if they're wanting to do big things, inevitably there's going to be setbacks, there's going to be challenges, uh, you know, things like that. And so when that comes up, to really have plumbed the depths of why you want what you want, so, so not only are you clear about what you want, but you're clear about why you want it, that's going to help those moments and it's going to be the light at the end of the tunnel to help pull pull that person through so that they can get the success that they're really after. So you've worked with a lot of really high level and very successful people. You also personally are a high level and very successful person. So let me ask you this because the show is the root of all success. So if you had to, if you had to kind of distill your success, what you've achieved in your life as a coach, um, what would you say is the one thing if you had to narrow it down to one thing, what's the one thing that you could point to is like, this is why I'm successful. Uh, I would, I would really narrow it down to belief, belief, my belief that what I want is possible. Uh, you know, I've done a number of things in my career that no one has ever done. Uh, belief that, so belief that things are possible, belief in myself, Belief that if someone pays me 150000 that I can produce the type of results that really are going to be favorable to them. 
Um, the belief that when I step on stage, that even though I might not be one of the biggest name speakers at a conference, my talk will be the one that leaves all the hats on the ground. The you know belief belief at the end of the day is what makes everything work. It, it's what makes everything possible. Belief in in what you can do and belief in yourself. Those the, that that overall really has been the foundation of everything for me. I, dude, I was 21 years old and I believed that I could help people make their life better, um, and and I did. And I and and you know it's it wasn't blind faith. It, 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 I had the chops to do it because I I had a good number of years of experience of. Uh, of personal development, but you'd be surprised at how many people have amazing backgrounds or talents or gifts or, or, or expertise. Uh, and, and they live below what's possible for them. And so, um, yeah, I, I think belief really is, is a game changer. Like, like you had to believe that charging six figures was possible for you. Many people do not believe that that's possible for them, even though they may have the chops to be able to play there. So it, it's really, yeah. it changes everything. It, I, I think, I think that is the, probably the most underrated statement that you made there about belief. This one key to success is believing that you can do it. It's having faith. And that if you go all the way back to all of the metaphysical writers of the early early 20th century, the, the Florence Shen, <clears throat> Napoleon Hill, Wallace Waddles, U.S. Anderson, they all talk about this. Faith is the cornerstone of your ability to accomplish anything. And, and we're not talking faith in the religious sense, although I think that that obviously has something to do with it. But faith is the confidence of what you can't see. And it's the evidence of what you know to be true, even though it is not present. And that's what faith is. And what you said is belief. This is the same thing. And I think I go back to when I started coaching, you know, thinking I could, is anybody ever going to pay me 1500 bucks a month just to meet with me once a week? And, and of course people did. Yeah. And I could not have fathomed that somebody would pay, a, a, you know, over 10 grand a month collectively to, yeah. to meet with me, to help, let me see, help, help them get through that. But now I believe it. So is there a point at which I need to believe that somebody would pay me a million? Who knows? Tony Robbins yeah. gets people to pay a million dollars. I'm not Tony Robbins yet, but who knows? Who knows where it's going to go? He dude. He gets a million plus twenty percent, and so you know, yes, he's he's got a mega following, and and he's obviously like the the big dog in in that world. And uh, I know other people that that charge at that level as well, and so it's completely possible. It's it's really just about belief. So let me ask you this question as a follow up: How do you personally define success? Uh, well, for me, it, it comes down to two parts. Number one is fulfillment, and the other is impact. Now, the clever people watching the show m might have assumed I was going to say say achievement, because you know, if you and I reference Tony, Tony talks a lot about the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Very important things, but the, I, I I like to take achievement to the next level. I like to take that further to talk about impact because achievement doesn't necessarily relate to impact, but impact does relate to achievement. And so fulfillment is I, I have purpose. I feel joy as a function of doing what I do. And impact is it tangibly, measurably makes the world a better place. That's success. Imp I love it. Impact is impact is underrated for success too. I think because a lot of times Huge. people think of success financially or success, even in yeah. time, you know, getting time, that's fine. I, and those are ways I define success, but impact is why we're here. I think God put you and me on earth to make a specific impact, to affect a certain number of people, to affect a certain thing. And when we do that, we are successful. 100%. So, I think, I believe it was Nelson Mandela that said, helping people is, is I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but it's something to the effect of helping other people is the rent we pay for the life, you know, the, the benefit, the joy of being alive. That's, that's part of the deal of, of why we're here is we get to help other people. So and, the film, well, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Finish that segment. I have I have kind of this agreement with myself that 
it would be really awkward if God does exist to get to the end and have to explain why you squandered your gifts or, or why you didn't help as many people as you could have. And that conversation is so awkward to me that I'm just not willing to, to go there. And so I'm, I, I want to leave it all on the field while I'm here. I want to help uh, as many people as I can. So based on that definition of fulfillment impact, do you consider yourself to be a successful person? I'd say yes. I love it. I love the confidence of that. So let's uh, let's finish the show, kind of bring it in for landing with advice. So you're obviously a very successful coach. You've advised lots and lots of people and lots of different things. I want you to kind of think about what's one piece of advice for an entrepreneur that you could give that would universally apply that would help everyone achieve greater levels of impact and fulfillment? Uh, well, I would say that there's probably something inside of you that you want to do that excites you, that makes you feel alive. And that thing also likely has some connection to helping other people. I think we all, I don't think, we all innately want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And so when you find the sweet spot of what do I have, what gift do I have, what expertise do I have that can make the world a better place and that will make me happy in the process, the clarity and the honesty of whatever that is for you then dovetails with like, go chase it because that's what the world needs and, and that's what's going to make you happy. Love it, man. Um, and, and look, let's, let's be real. You know, we're, we're both capitalists and, and entrepreneurs making money is good too, because as the venerable Kanye West once said, having money is not everything, not having it is. And so <laughs> to be able to, you know, pay your bills and have a lifestyle that, that feels good and be able to, you know, you know what money is really good for. It's really good for only two things. Number one, saying yes to the things in life that you want to say yes to and building things. Money is really good for building things, building dreams, building projects, building schools, bu bu building. Money is good for building and it's good for saying yes to things. You get a bill, you can say, yes, I can pay that. You have, you, you have a desire to go somewhere on a trip. Yes, we can, we can do that. Somebody comes to you with, with an investment idea. Yes, I'd like to be a part of that. And a family member or a friend comes to you and says, man, I'm in a tough spot. I, I could use some help. Yes, I can help you. That's what money's good for. Yeah, money equals yes. That's good. I, I like that perspective. Well, Shannon, uh, I want to tell everybody how to get in touch with you. You can go to shannongram.com, shannongram.com, or you can follow him on Facebook and Instagram at Ask Shannon Graham. Ask Shannon Graham, either one of those platforms. He's there. Anything else you want to say to the audience today before we go? Talk, you can, we didn't talk about Astronaut, your other company. Is there anything at all you want to leave us with before we uh, sign off for today? Uh, you know, man, I, what I'd like to say just from me to you is that I'm really thankful for you uh, because I, I know you make a big difference in the world as well. And I know this podcast helps a lot of people and just getting your message out there and telling these stories is valuable. So I just want to share my appreciation for you and, and how you show up in the world. Well, that's very kind of you, Shannon. I appreciate you. So I would uh, highly recommend if you're looking for a coach to help you achieve a moonshot objective, look up Shannon, go to ask Shannon Graham on Facebook or Instagram, look him up and uh, reach out. I, I think you won't be disappointed. Shannon, thanks for being on the show today. Best of luck on everything you got going. I know you just moved to from California to Texas like a lot of millions of other people have done. So I hope you're enjoying your new home and uh, we'll talk, we'll chat again soon. Appreciate that. Thank you. Wow. So there you have it. Uh, Shannon Graham, very successful uh, entrepreneur in his own right. Also a very, very successful business coach. And I hope that this, this lesson that he gave us today and in, in belief, this lesson in uh, the cost of where you are, is more expensive than cost of where you could be. You just have to make the investment to get there. Th this is a good lesson for those of you, you that are listening to this, thinking about, should I hire a coach? Should I spend six figures to invest in a coach? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Now, 
you may not be in a financial position where that is viable because you may not have a business that's even doing six figures yet. Well, then that's that we're not the types of coaches you need yet. There are coaches that can serve you to get you where you can be. But if you're doing $3 million or more in annual revenue, it's probably time for you to invest in a coach to get you to that next level. And what is the next level? Well, the next level, as Shannon was talking about in the show, the, the next level could be more revenue. It could be more profit. It could be more access. It could be more opportunities, or it could be more time at home with your family. So if you've got it, I want, I want to kind of pitch Shannon, uh, Shannon services in mind for just a minute, if you would permit me here at the end of the show, if you've got a moonshot concept, you're an executive, you're a leader, you're an entrepreneur, and you, you've got some big concept that you want to achieve. You, you just don't know how to do it. Shannon is your guy. Contact Shannon, hire Shannon, invest in him for the next three years. Get him to help you make that moonshot a reality. Go to Ask Shannon Graham on Facebook or Instagram or go to ShannonGraham.com and, and set up a meeting. I vouch for him. I hired him as a coach myself. I know that he can do it. Now, let me talk about what I could do. I only take seven clients per year one-on-one -on -one because I do, uh, as we talked about in the show, I do a high level engagement with my clients where we're working together on a weekly basis to get you where you want to go to exit without exiting, to get you out of the weeds of daily operations so that you can then focus on whatever that big thing is you want to accomplish. So I can help you get your business there. And that's what I do. Only have a couple of slots open for the next 12 months. If you're interested in looking at that, go to the real slash coaching, the real slash coaching and hit the apply button. All you got to do is apply there and it'll set up a call for you and me that we can talk about how I could help you. And, and let's be real at the end of the call, we may decide that I can't help you or I'm not the coach for you. And maybe I can recommend you to someone else like Shannon, but look into this. Don't let this podcast in without you making a commitment and believing that there's something greater out there that you can achieve. So I'm the real Jason Duncan. I thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for subscribing, for leaving a review. Thank you for following it. And uh, I hope to hear you. I hope you get to hear this next time when I go on the show again, when I interview another very successful entrepreneur about his or her journey to success. And until then, of course, I'm the real Jason Duncan. And as always, Jesus is King. Attention business owners. Attention business owners. Feeling burnout from running your business? Uncertain if you're nearing burnout? Take our free 10-question business burnout test at businessburnouttest.com to discover where you stand. With just 10 quick questions, you'll learn how to immediately begin making changes to regain freedom and success. Cut your daily operations time in half. Improve your quality of life and prepare your business for your future exit without losing revenue or profit. Visit businessburnouttest.com now and take the test. Thank you for listening to another edition of The Root of All Success with The Real Jason Duncan. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, visit therootofallsuccess.com to access the show notes and other helpful resources. Follow Jason on social media at The Real Jason Duncan. See you again next time here on The Root of All Success. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.